Hey everybody, GM Matt here, talking today about how to set up a game of Torg Eternity in Roll20. This is just going to cover some of the very, very basics for how to get a game set up for those maybe who aren't familiar with how uh, all of the systems in Roll20 work. So I'm going to get you started on that, but there will be a whole lot for you to learn if you're new to it. There will be a whole lot for you to learn beyond what we talk about today. So there's two steps to getting your Torg game set up in Roll20. The first step is getting all of these cards out of your PDF and into Roll20. And this will take some time, but it's not going to be nearly as time consuming as maybe you fear it will for, what is it, about 180 cards, something like that, that, that come on that PDF. So we got to go through a couple of steps to get this done. The first thing we need to do is convert these cards from the Adobe Acrobat format that they come in into an image format. And then we need to actually set up the decks inside Roll20, which we'll get to in a few minutes. So let's first talk about getting your decks into image files. The quickest way to do this is to load up the file that has all of the cards in it. That's the one that has 360 pages every single deck. That At least that's the way it was provided with the preview set. There may be future decks that look different than that, but the preview set that's available as of uh, July 15, 2007, when this is, this is being recorded, it has one file that has all 180 cards in it front and back. And that's what we're looking at right here. And in Adobe Acrobat, to get these cards saved into image files, the process is really, really simple. You're going to click on File, you're going to go to export to, you're going to go to image, and then you're going to pick JPEG. And then it's going to bring up a screen that gives, lets you select the folder where you want to save this. We'll, we'll, in this case, we'll save it in a folder called Images 3. And then we're just going to click on the Save button. And what that will do is it's actually going to save every single front and back of every single card as a separate image file at full 100% resolution. That's exactly what you want. Now, you may have Adobe Reader. If you have Adobe Reader, I seriously doubt it has this export functionality in it. If it does, more power to you. But if for some reason you're not able to use this export functionality, there is another way to get the card saved. It's just a little bit more trouble than the previous one. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to uh, take this same file, you're going to load it up, and you need to get it where it's being viewed at 100%. Notice that it loads up at an actual kind of amplified expanded view and you want to get it back to just 100% of the card's actual size. Then once you've got that done, you're going to load up something called the Windows Snipping Tool. That's what we're looking at right here. And you're going to click on New. And then it's going to prompt you to drag the cursor around the area you want to capture. So I'm going to capture this card corner to corner right there. Boom. Now you see it appear in the Snipping Tool. And then I'm just going to click the Save Snip button. And that's going to allow me to browse over to the folder where I want to save this card and to save it. I finish that up and then I get back into my PDF. I scroll down to the next card which is this card back here and I just repeat the process. New, drag around, it's converted into the snipping tool, save. And I can save you a lot of time now. The next time you come around to the back of a card after you've put the card in, like right here, you don't have to put the back of the card in a second time. You just need one copy of the back of each card to get your cards properly put into Roll20. So now you've finished with this first process. You've taken 
uh, the PDF and using either the export function or the snipping tool you've gotten copies image copies of all of your cards saved onto your computer so what happens next well the next thing we want to do is we want to go into roll 20 and we want to create click the create new game button and then we're gonna put roll 20 torg starting tutorial and before we hit ready create game we're gonna pick our character sheet which is gonna be the torg eternity character sheet and then we're gonna click we're ready and that is gonna create the game for us so now we've got our torg eternity game ready to go in roll 20 let's go ahead and make sure our character sheets are working here I'm gonna create click on journal I'm gonna click on add and then I'm gonna click on character and it's created a random new character for me I'll save that and then let's just see here yep there we go we got our tabs for our powers equipment perks we've got our home tab and everything that a player is gonna to need to play the game or that you're gonna to need to run NPCs if you want to use them that way so we're ready to go with our character sheets immediately the next thing we need to do is now create our decks. To do that, we're going to cl click on the Collection tab here. And then we're going to go down to where it says Decks. And then we're going to add a new deck. We're going to add the Drama Deck. So you notice we click Add. We get New Deck name down here. And then we're going to click on where it says New Deck. And this is going to give us a screen that lets us set that deck up. So I'm going to name the deck Drama and for settings on this I'm going to show it to the players we're going to allow the players to draw cards off of it and then when allowing to choose can can people go into the deck and choose specific cards out of it and we're gonna let the GM do that GM's gonna be able to cheat and actually pull fronts off if the GM wants to uh, the discard pile anybody that wants to choose show fronts uh, so anybody can go rifle through the discard pile and see what's in it if they want to. When played to the tabletop, cards are going to be played face up and they're going to be played as drawings. We don't want them to be played as tokens. That's not going to help us. We have that option, but we don't want to do that. We want to leave it this way. So now we get to the card dimensions. You can create any kind of card dimensions that you want to. And I recommend that if you don't like the way they look when they're put out on the table to experiment a little bit with different sizes. The size and dimensions that I like to use are, well for the drama deck it's going to be 300 by 214. Now that's because the 300 is the width and the 214 is the height. Uh, and drama decks get, get played onto the table in uh, landscape mode instead of portrait mode. So you want to go 300 by 214 for the drama deck. But when you put the rest of the decks in, destiny deck, so forth and so on, you're going to reverse this. You want it 214 by 300 for those. We're going to let players see uh, the number of cards in the decks and hands. The GM's going to see the same thing. We're also going to let the GM take a peek at the front of the cards that are in other people's decks whenever the GM wants to by clicking that there. All right, so next thing we're ready for now is to load the back of the drama deck cards in. And to do that, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing off screen here, but I've got another monitor set up, and it's got uh, the uh, images of the cards pulled up in it. And I'm just going to go in to that images folder, and I'm going to take card number one, the you try to outflank, it's card number one in the drama deck, and I'm going to draw, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do card number one, I'm going to do the back, We're, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm going to take the back of the drama deck, and I'm just going to drag it across, and drop it into this area here, and roll 20 will load it up, and there it is. So I've got the back of my deck ready to go now. Now I'm going to start adding cards. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click the add card button, and then I'm going to put a name for this card, card number one, and then I'm going to drag over the card that has the number one down in the lower right hand corner into this area, 
and I've got my first card front right here that you try to outflank card. Save that. And then I'm just going to continue with this process till I've got all 40 of these drama cards into the deck. So I'm going to click Add Card, card number two, and then I'm going to drag card number two over into here. And there it is. So what you'll see is once we say I'm going to save the deck after I put my cards in and now I've got my drama deck over here I'm going to show it and what you'll see is that I can shuffle the deck and then once it's shuffled it's ready to deal cards I can pull a card off the top drop it onto the tabletop there it is if I select the card and I hit the delete key it puts it into a discard pile and that discard pile can then be recalled back into the main deck by hitting the recall button. If I want to deal a card to a player, I cl click the deal button down here. I say I'm going to deal one card to GM Matt. And guess what? If you look over here above my avatar, you're going to see that I've got one drama card in my hand. If I click on that, I can then actually see the card itself and um, by clicking on the card, I then see a larger picture of it. Of course, I'm never actually going to have a drama card in my hand in a real game, but I'm just giving you that as an example. So let's go pull a couple of decks off of a different game that I have set up here on Roll20. I'm going to take a Destiny deck and move it over. And then I'm also going to take what I call my pool deck, and I'm going to move that over. I'll explain what that is in a minute. So now, if we go to the Collections tab, you'll see uh, I've got a complete Destiny deck uh, that's available to me, and I've got my pool deck that's available. I'm going to show both of those. And now I'm going to deal four cards to myself. out of that destiny deck. And there you have them. All of the cards that are in my hand are visible there. They can be viewed individually if I want to remind myself of what's in them. And now I'm going to talk briefly about a way to solve a problem which has to do with which cards are in a player's pool and which cards are in a player's hand. Uh, you'll notice here I've created a special deck that I call the pool deck and I suggest you just create a graphic and create a deck that looks kind of similar to this. The purpose of the pool deck is to divide my hand up to serve as a divider that separates out cards that are in my pool versus cards that are in my hand. So at the beginning of the game I'm just going to deal one card to each player from the pool deck. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to load up my decks. And you'll see by default it separates the two decks into two different categories. But we don't want players to be playing the game that way. We want to just click on that All button so that we see all the cards in your hand in one place. And then I'm going to slide this pool card all the way over here to where it's on the far left and on the top. Now during play, most of the time when we're out of turn-based combat, this is what a player's hand is going to look like. It's going to have four cards or more on the right hand side of the pool card and none on the left. But when we get into turn based situation, what the player is going to be able to do when they play a card into their pool is they're going to be able to shift it over from the hand to the pool so that everything that's on the left side of the pool card is in the player's pool. Everything on the right side is in their hand. That's an easy way for them to keep track of it. There's no easy way for other players to see what's going on in your hand, although I suppose we could make everybody's hand visible to everybody else. But um, nonetheless, um, we've got a situation here now where we can keep track of what's in people's pools as we move uh, through a combat round. So I just thought I would mention that briefly at least so that you could see how uh, card play can potentially work in this game. 
to play a card all I have to do is just drag that card out of my hand and onto the desk and there we go we can see uh, ever that card is visible to everybody now and it can be read and looked at and talked about and then when it's ready to discard we just hit the delete key and it goes into the destiny card discard so a couple more things we're going to do before we get our game uh, before we've got our game at least set up for the basics first thing we're going to do is we're going to enable 3d dice we're going to go over to hit my settings and we're going to scroll up until we see these two boxes enable 3d dice and automatically roll 3d dice i'm going to select both of those and the reason we're doing that is it's possible to roll dice where it just tells you what the result is in the chat on roll 20 and that's fine that works really well in some games but i really feel like a lot of torg uh, relies on the suspense of you know watching that die carefully to see how it turns up and uh, of kind of having that tactile and audible function of listening to the die you know rolling another die and listening to it roll around i just i think that's part of the fun of this particular game and so uh, we're going to enable those 3D dice so that when we roll dice in the game, we're going to actually see that die up on the screen. And you'll see it also displays its result in the chat here, but I just like the idea of being able to roll physical dice for this particular game for some reason. So I'm setting my game up that way. Now we're going to set up a couple of macros that will make it easier for players to roll the dice quickly. I'm going to go over here to the collections tab where we made our decks and we're now going to create a few macros to create a macro we're going to click add and then it automatically puts the edit macro screen up and then I'm just going to call this macro roll d20 very simple macro here for the actions we're going to put a backslash we're going to put the word roll and then we're going to put d20 couple more things we need to do with it we want to make this macro visible to all players we want to save it and then we want to click the in bar box so that it now appears down here on the very bottom of the screen it's this is a macro anybody can use so when they go down here roll d20 there it is the d20 is rolled let's do the same thing now for bonus die let's say roll 1bd we're going to create a macro called roll 1bd. We're going to type backslash the word roll and then the word then the letters d6. We're going to make it visible to all players, save it, and then put that down in the bar. And there you go. Now we've rolled a bonus style. Oh, look at that. I got a re-roll, so we're going to have a roll of 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 this time. And now we're going to add one more macro that we will call roll 2bd and this time it's going to be roll 2d6 down here make this visible to all players save it make it visible in the bar and now whenever your players want to roll dice in the game it's going to be very very easy for them to do so it's not going to be they're going to have to open up the dice thing and then click the die they want to roll and then go from there they're just going to be able to go down to the bottom of the screen get that d20 rolled just like that oh and it's going to be bad in this case because we've got somebody's just rolled a mishap and probably has disconnected in this case so those are the basics for how to get your roll 20 uh, mechanics set up in uh, a torque eternity mechanics set up in a roll 20 game there are a lot of good tutorials and instructional videos and such that are out there that talk more generally about how to set games up in Roll20. I suggest if you're new to it that you go ahead and uh, work through those as well. Uh, Roll20 is very powerful, but you've got to really have a good understanding of how everything in it works in order to uh, be effective, especially if you're running a game as a GM. So that's about it. If you have any questions for me, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Leave me a like if you can. 
and um, if you do comment, I will watch for your questions in those and be sure to answer them uh, pretty quickly.